Okay. Basically, I'm starting to use hopped up scripts that I put on my GitHub. My GitHub's here. I have hopped up C Shard scripts. Most of them are basic coding exercises to get to know how to code. But you see, we're finally jumping in to having a grid of 3D points with nested loops. So what I did in here was I double clicked on a blank hops nodes and I, I put in the direct link to that to that uh, GitHub, which is open source and it's online. Once that's in there, uh, I can I can basically have my parametric model grid. Uh, the spacing, it kind of plugs in out of order sometimes, which is a little frustrating with hops nodes. But otherwise, let's just grab a little uh, integer sliders, two, two and two for X, Y, Z. We probably can live with it out of order. We'll put a little spacing in there as well. We'll probably put a spacing in as a double. So I'll just type in a 2.00. And there you go. You get a nice little uh, grid of points. You do have some data coming out, which is kind of nice as I jump over to params and grab here, uh, it will tell me exactly because I've scripted in the C component a pretty interesting out. This is hopped it up. You can't jump into the C script. All you can do is say, okay, that's a grid of 3D uh, points, nested loops. So I'll probably you know, go back into there and say, okay, I want the uh, grid of 3D points, nested loops, which is kind of a long way of saying it. Let's just say 3D grid of points and correct it, copy that, uh, hit cancel, and then just go back into this node. Ah, uh, right click on that node and give it that title and just correct that typo grid of 3D points. So let's say uh, we probably should start having a little better uh, C sharp grid of 3D points. And we don't need any caps if we're not going to use camel case or Pascal case. Let's just stay with, I think, pretty simple C scripts and only capitalize things as we need them. So a grid of 3D points. There you go. Oh, and also you want to just hit that little paint bucket. There you go. A nice little node that you start playing with and bring into your geometries and drive what you want to do. Um, and, of course, the grid of 3D points is coming out as a point. And there we go. We just jazzed up our little tiny... Uh, tool for doing some pretty cool stuff to build some data. It's just one big list. It's not gridded. It's not like starting with a. Uh, uh, it's not like starting with a uh, uh, vector grid of points, bringing it in, and then having a nice tree data of. Uh, that's a, that's the big difference here. Is you're not pulling your grid under a, a tree. You're pulling it in as just a list. But you can get control of that through some simple tools as well. So. That's enough said for it to begin with. Let's just take that down here. Let's uh, copy this one up and say that'll be the first node that we think about using. And then I have to just, uh, we got a little singer in the background, Ella, that just won't be quiet. And this is my life. So if you like it, you like it. So let's disconnect all things. This is kind of slow and cumbersome. But what's nice is I have a 3D grid of point script that I wrote in C. It's been hopped up on GitHub. Anybody can access it, it's right here. And the next one I wanna do is a range tool. So I want this range one. And I could just go into that, which is live, and it's been scripted for you if you need it. Um, you don't need to download it and put it on your computer. I'll just leave it here for you on my site. And we will grab another hops node and we will just jump to it and see what we need. I like to leave these little things here um, because it could come in handy. Uh, there's the range node and let's see what happens. Give it a second to load. There you go. Start, end, step, and get a range. So all you really want to do with that is uh, probably double click or right click. And you can see it's just a range node. We don't need to be making an extra range node. Uh, even though it does pretty, it runs pretty fast. There's enough of those online. So let's just take that one and say, no, I think we'll do okay without amping up a script with a range node. So let's grab another one. And this one's called for each loop L. Zero 02. So we're going to jump in here and we're going to take a look at L02, uh, which was my next script that I hopped up and put on my GitHub. And these are going to get more and more complex. We're actually starting to deal with geometries in C, and then we're going to get into Rai Ice's uh, geometry. Should be really fun as well. So LLL, JKL2, four inch loop. So let's right click here, grab our copy link. Exit out of that, go into here, type in our path, and that's live. 
and there's your for each loop. I can pick a numbered list, which is cool because a numbered list might might want something a little jivier. Let's keep moving this down. And whenever I see a nice numbered list, I think, well, if there's a multiplier, let's just grab this one. I thought I actually did this in the other one, but I guess not. I guess I did it multiple times. There's a numbered list coming out of gene pool, just multiple number sliders, and they'll default to probably, no, they, they, they'll take a float, which is nice. And then we can just throw in a multiplier. What's really nice is you can throw in a multiplier, uh, whatever you want, let's just 2.99 multiplier, and then let's check our output, and there it is. You've got a nice little node that can do a multiplier. Don't know if you really need it. Um, the script itself is called uh, left-clicking the for each loop. So that's kind of nice for each loop. It's going to run through. We'll do a quick copy. And actually, I think what I'll do is I will left click on that and let's just put in four underscore each. Oh, Rhino, we don't want to do that. Let's just go here and do four underscore each underscore loop and do paint box. And now we've got another node to play around with right here. We'll just slide it up and then we'll get rid of our gene pool which may come in handy again. There we go, here and here, and just output that. There we go, get a little bit to play with. And just keep driving our data. We might need some Booleans and things like that. Let's just grab the next one, the next one that I said might be interesting. Um, and these are basically scripts that I'm gonna have all these C scripts up here, um, ungroup, um, and some of them are running, some of them aren't. Uh, these ones actually run pretty nice. This one defaults. This one runs with nothing because I've got it defaulting. But they're all ready to go, and I'm kind of just putting them in sets. This was kind of like basic, uh, basic, uh, easy, medium, hard, and now we're going to do kind of intermediate uh, scripts, which obviously there's a little more into negotiating, writing a uh, 3D grid of points, but it's really just nested loops. It's not something that's too difficult to figure out. We're going to do a remove item from list. So L03, so we'll jump back into here. We'll go back to here because I put in a lot of things, but I don't think a lot of them are really good for Grasshopper. Uh, it doesn't make too much sense to kill yourself trying to do it. So let's get down to three, remove item from list, right click, copy the link, close it out. Our hops node, let's, uh, uh, let's just put it to path. Type it in, hit go, and give it a second. There we go. So a number list. And we're going to call out. I can't remember what we were calling out. Uh, if that's the list of numbers, it might funk out on me because it might have wanted integers. Uh, remove item from list. I'm able to um, number list. What I'm going to do is just, I think I'm going to just take a series this might be better. Um, sets, series, da, 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 da. where are you? Oh, you're in here somewhere. Oh no, series is back over in this area. I think, I never use series, I always use, oh yeah, sequence. What am I thinking? Um, so we'll just, we'll set a couple of numbers here. Start, step, stop. Let's just put it back up here. Start, step, and count. We'll go five, that series of numbers comes in. And the called list is taking out, I think, I don't remember what it was doing. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Um, the script's running, but the called list seems to be missing a little bit of data. Which means, if I've got something like that, okay, that's working. I don't really see what's being called out unless this was kind of a... Uh, uh, an even number. No. What I have to do is if the script isn't working, then that's why I'm checking all of these. Then I have to go back in and say, okay, that was the uh, remove item from list, but it was coming from this series of dealing with lists. Remove item from list. I have to pull back the C. And there was called list. Call negative numbers. Ah, so that's a good thing to know. Uh, hopefully that was the one call negative numbers remove item from list was actually the call negative numbers one. So I should have said that, but you've lost this information. <coughs> so it's my own fault. So I definitely want to go in here and say uh, a series that starts at 
<coughs> oh, put on a negative number just for fun. Uh, put it into a negative number and then bring that way back. There we go. So you see it's calling out any number that's ending in the list that's a negative number and leaving it blank. So we just have to be careful with this that we, we double click on this and it's remove. We want to say remove item from list, but we actually want to say um, <coughs> call. Hmm. Let me jump over here again. Uh, we want to call negative numbers. And so that's exactly what's happening there. And then we also want to make it here. So yeah, I really need to neaten that up a little bit. But that's why I'm catching my mistakes. So, uh, and that's why I'm giving these tutorials. I'm not perfect. And the things I'm putting in here are for people that don't want to have to go in and write these C scripts from white papers and put these all in here. I did this for a long time and put on user objects, which are all actually available still. If you go in here and you go into my repositories, if you want to get used, get access to those user objects, some are private, some are public because I do have a Patreon, but the commonly used uh, Grasshopper user objects are there. And then I think the X basic sharp nodes are public. So that's where you can go and get the user objects, which are basically everything you're seeing up at the top here. But my point is you shouldn't have to go in. You should trust sites. Uh, they start hopping up scripts and hopping up a script is actually a little more difficult than you think. You've got to go in and get into the params and you've got to deal with get string numbers, integers, and you also have to output things. And you're writing these kind of packaged little nodes from C and GH Python scripts. So you're seeing what I'm dealing with and I figured you know, I was doing this all on my own. I end up giving tutorials after, after the fact. I may as well just make it live and record short videos of everything I'm doing as I'm doing it. So let's grab another one uh, right here and actually probably grab another one there. This one lines up with this one. This one lines up with that one. And I'll just keep going on these notes until I run out. Um, let me just organize these Boom over here. Pew, pew. All right, so let's see if we can grab another one. The next one I thought would be helpful is a random number generator. Now that's not so exciting, but actually it isn't too bad. And I call that L04. So let's jump back into this. Uh, oh no, I left my GitHub. I'll put it back in a GitHub, jump over here. And I may make these when they get more and more complicated public uh, pri private sites and try to make a little bit of Patreon back. But if you like what I'm doing, just you know encourage me by joining the Patreon. That'd be cool. Um, there's tons of stuff in here that I give up, and I do have some private repositories as well. Uh, let's jump back into this repo. Basic scripts, it was L04, random number generator. I prepped all these up beforehand. Random number generator, right click, grab your link. It's pretty repetitive stuff. It's not rocket science, but there's a little bit of nooks and crannies that you gotta figure out. So random number generator, bam. So we've got a count, this is a pretty fun one. You can bring in, um, let's bring in a minimum of, you know, 3.99 and see if that works. As it, sometimes, well, that's why I like to have it down here. Actually, this is probably easier. Just bring it in and we'll say get rid of that one. And random number generator, let's do a count of seven. Uh, let's do a minimum of two. A maximum of 5.47 and let's have a little seed that we can it'll be integer related let's see what numbers are created and there they are nice little random number generator not too hard to figure out uh it seems to be up and running so we will just say uh random number generator and they're like they're oh how many times are we going to do that um random number generator right and that's it paint it in there and then you go you get a little box that you can just get rid of these it would be nice if there's a quick disconnect for everything i know i know there is but i don't want to have to remake this one and this is only going to have this name in this file uh, so you don't want to cut and paste and copy and put in snippets you got to learn how to name your things to whatever you want so i think it's an exercise people should practice um, when they're getting into uh, writing scripts. I'm just going to keep moving over these kind of params and, and uh, outputs just to see what's going on. So take this one farther down the line. This one's coming down. This one will be here. And I'll take one of these over here. So the next one, 
And I guess I'll finish up with this. This is a list 3D points in a random class. So a list of 3D points in a random class. Let's see what that one looks like. Okay, jump back in to hop these up. I've already done it. It's quite a bit of prep work, actually. I've not only hopped these up, but if you look back at the repositories, I've given you the hopped up C-sharp scripts as well. So hopped up c -sharp. I had this one starting, which only has one item. This one, I think, has more. So this is where you go in and you see what it looks like to hop up a script in Grasshopper. And you can learn an awful lot from this as well. And this is a public site. But I'm doing that work for you because I'm teaching undergrads and I'm trying to get them into computational design after Grasshopper and Rhino in the span of a month. So I'm doing a lot of this homework for people. And, you know, it'd be cool if I got paid for it. But I guess I sort of get paid in school, even though there's very few students that are, that are interested in this. So we'll jump back to here. We'll go into the repo. There's the hopped up scripts, and then there's the hopped uh, up items. So that's the one you actually want. So what do we say? L5, uh, which is a uh, list of 3D points in random class. That's probably similar to what I already did, and I just downloaded it accidentally. You don't want to do that. You want to right click. So the point is not to load your computer up with all this stuff. My hope is that with GitHub, uh, Copilot is I can do some quick studies and just like, bam, what do I want in C? What do I want to start typing in C? Uh, what do I have to script out of a textbook? What do I need? And as soon as I get it figured out there that it's running, and what's nice about GitHub is I can just type in like a comment of what I want to do. It's going to give me on Copilot a bunch of suggestions. And then I'm able to just pack them in very fast in the Grasshopper and do the most popular stuff. And I don't think anybody else is doing this. I really don't. I, I know some people that are working in C and, and uh, at other schools, but I don't know anybody trying to streamline this for somebody to get access to, to small scripts as quick as possible. Anyway, I think I, I, think I copied that. Uh, let's go down here and just do a path. See if we copied that latest one. And what's that going to give me? It's going to give me a height. Uh, so we'll do a 10 height, we'll do spacing, we'll do a seed. Uh, actually, I wouldn't mind a bigger number for a seed. I think integers for seeds. And an amplitude of 7. And now I have a point tower. It's pretty awesome. So there's our point tower. You go yoga, yada, yada. And there it goes, running around as a different height as it slowly builds itself. It's a nice little script. It came under the Warsaw. And yes, that is a point tower. And I will probably call that, uh, what was it called here? When I double click here, it was called 3D uh, list 3D point and random class. That's not what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it, um, I'm going to call it point tower. I just exactly do that point tower. And that's just because that's what I'm thinking of using that little script for. So that's going to be my little example of what I could do, a little bit of disconnection, start to slow down, but I haven't made it speedy. I've just made it so I can do it repetitively. Uh, I'm not smarter so than the world, I can tell you that. But I, um, let's take this and let's put that back up there and we get a nice little point tower. So these are all little custom nodes that are gonna jive up scripts. And once I get these master ones down from Warsaw, these are all in one file where you can grab you don't have to go up here and start grabbing these scripts and think what they have to do. Now you could do that. You could definitely go up here and say, okay, that was the random, that was the list of that, which is very similar to that. And then you're going in and you're like, oh, cool. That's very similar. It's got the out, it's got the points and I can go in and I can customize the C script. But what I'm finding with these C scripts is nobody wants to go in here and customize these little things. And nobody cares about learning specifically that language if they're working on a bigger geometry. And nobody wants to have these user objects sitting there on their computer like this, unless you're going to use them all the time. Mine would be, how do we hop to it? How do we just jump in a hop snow and jump over to where it is? I don't know what's easier. This is what I think is easier. This is what I'm going to do. So I think that was it. And then we have some N's and P's. And I think that's a pretty good 20 minute lecture. And with all, <coughs> excuse me, with all the noise in my family. So we'll save the last ones and we'll pull them over to in the intermediate area. And we'll do some more here, and we'll just bring over these params as we go. And then the main point is, is you write a script. Like, you literally write something. You think about these nodes, and you say, okay, I've got this grid of 3D points. I've got this for-each loop. It's a magnifier, uh, different magnifiers. And uh, so what I would do very quickly is I'd write a script 
maybe maybe even write a script with these nodes as opposed to actually writing a script and then hopping them up with those nodes. So I think I can do even better. I think I just copy these scripts, right? And it just takes a second because it's got to build references to everything. Bring them down here. Turn these ones off. Uh, preview off. They can run still, but I, I have to wonder. So now we're just seeing our point grades. If this is my point grade, and I think, okay, what would I do with it? Okay, there's the point grid. Let's uh, grab five in the x direction, five in the y, five in the z. We'll keep spacing at 2.99 as a plug-in. There's our first geometries. We can really jazz those out. Uh, we can zoom in because they're only points. We don't have to actually display the points and see the points. Uh, point flavor, dot, point, cross, let's just do dot. All right. So we've got all those points that are running out as a list. And then for each number in the list, for each grid, uh, well, those points definitely because they're point grids, so you don't want to deconstruct points. Uh, take those points across. And we maybe want the number of X and the X to be multiplied by, I don't know, another parameter. Uh, let's do four and um, as a multiplier. And then let's reconstruct that point. I'm just making things up. I don't think too hard. I'll take the Y and the Z, right? And we can switch those just because just why not? Let's just switch those, the Z and the Y, and take the multiplier out as the X. Now we've got, oh, then we got my Z to go to my Y, and my multiplier goes to my X. So now we've got these points that are starting to do some jazz and move over this way. I've got my original points over here. We've got these ones over here. I was just playing around a little bit with my seeds and my information. I created a point. This here. I did move it a little bit. I had to rebuild my points. Sorry, I went backwards a little bit. Construct. I was thinking of the Z and the Y. Ah, Z, Y, and the multiplier goes to X. Should get a different set of points than here. They're very close. The multiplier. It's very small now, so I might want to have a multiplier that goes back up to that 4 and pulls that out. Uh, I do have the same amount of points here, 125 to 125. Sometimes just for data visualization, I like to grab a line tool, grab those initial points and starts, those as the ends, and see if I can't see what kind of data is starting to be generated between it. Just this weird little pattern. Um, a little playful. I haven't done anything with call the negative points because nothing dropped below. Uh, random, I was playing with a little bit, but nothing came of it. It's kind of way, so random numbers, if I could count in here. So I'm looking at a number. Um, yeah. I've got this nice set. Everything's above the basis. Um, and sometimes I, I, I kind of, okay, I didn't get everything up and running, but I'll throw on one of the best tools that I like that a lot of people default to, almost worse than Voronoi, is just throw on a little... Uh, Number slider and node size. Oh, this can be outrageous. Uh, let, me, let me just get a little, little tiny one here. A node size on here. And these are lines that are curves. There are a couple invalid lines, so I'll probably have to just do a little bit of a clean tree. I knew there was an issue there. Let me just see if I can't grab this tree and get rid of everything and get rid of the nulls. And then I should be able to pipe those together. They just become this little mishmash of forms, nothing fancy. But once you get something running, it's sometimes nice to just go back and play with uh, what you are playing with. Uh, number two, number three, that one would probably make a little more sense and a little more fluidity of being a rational number. So I can push and pull that a little bit, see what's jumping and changing. I don't know, it's just a little piece of geometry that I wouldn't normally have made. And I certainly wouldn't have made without iterations of a grid point. Spacing changes. At this point, you might want to just grab two more and allow yourself to change things up a bit so you're not stuck with just that system. You should pull your Y out and your Z out. Let's see what we get as a final pipe. Yeah, just something. It's a strange little structure. Nothing complex at all optically. It's not too bad. It's got some jazz going on in the inside. It's really starting to find its way to being something. And there's a lot of lines there and odd numbers which can allow for it to become tricky to understand. I've got a little, uh, well, I, I do like that multiplier. That multiplier is actually doing something very interesting to this. So whether you like that or not, uh, it's a nice piece of geometry. If you had to make it, 
Uh, we'll just take this all off and just put it to uh, preview off. There's no jitter on here, but I like that little object and maybe I'll just jump in here and grab a render. Um, and uh, looks like the main slider that's of interest is this one, the spacing, which really starts to do something funky. And that's the power of scripting and coding. Now, 25 minutes in, you can see what I'm doing. I'm grabbing nodes. I didn't even need an original script to do anything to. I actually wrote the original script from these nodes. And just with a couple of nodes like that, with a subdivision on it, a little bit of a clean tree, uh, lines generated from one point that's gone through this nice little multiplier number list, uh, and then swapping my, uh, my points and then reconstructing them has been pretty sweet. That's my pram that does most of the work. The other stuff does the same. I think getting your prams down less and less is really key. And we'll just throw that into a little bit of a group. Actually, just take the whole thing and wait to put the other two in, which didn't do anything. So that's a nice one just there. So that's kind of how I'm thinking. Like, how can I how can I use uh, how can I use my GitHub and use uh, hops to get to these basic scripts uh, and use what's tucked into those without getting too bogged down. What I'm going to do is get into M. We'll see. We'll do uh, out modifier, calculator, enumerator. Uh, what are the ones I want? Actually, just those two. Ideal elastic bounce. Then I've got a class uh, point 2D structure and class particle. And then I'll get back into the point tower, the number sorting and bubble sorting uh, exercise, which could be very exciting. When I'm done that, I'm actually going to leave this and do all my C that I learned off of Raya Isa. And I'm going to jazz up Rhino Geometry and all these incredible scripts from points in C all the way through the breps and classes. And at that point, I might, through GitHub or not, uh, return to Wickerson Studios uh, learning Python. Uh, so I'm not, sh haven't decided yet if I'm going to write in C Sharp or if I'm going to write in Python. I really haven't decided where I want to go as a language. What's nice is you can swap back and forth as fast as you want in Visual Studio Code. And you can produce your scripts for Grasshopper going back and forth. Really powerful tools. Nice little geometry. Nice little parametric slider on there. And pretty cool if you think about what that actually does. I love it, actually. It, optically, those straight pipes are actually forming something very interesting. So if I throw that through a rotation, uh, that is something I might actually tend to build or think about using. Nice power, nice control. It makes the path mapper and the mass and the offsets seem pretty uh, tight in what they can do, whereas a little bit of programming goes a long, long way. So let's jump in here and just have a little fun with that. Like the stretching of these points and pipes, a very simple structure. Um, actually, really excited about it. Thanks for watching.